Hey everyone, welcome to the Reddit branch. Today we have interesting stories from Reddit that I would love to hear your opinion about. So feel free to let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for content like this every day. First story, am I the a-hole for contradicting a friend who said all happy marriages have shared finances? To give some background, I had previously worked for another company, X, prior to the one I am at now for 11 years. So it's sufficient to say I made a lot of good relationship over that span of time and became friends with quite a few people I still actually talk to with on a regular basis, even though I left X company over a year ago. As most people do, we all tend to keep up with each other on social media, Snapchat, Facebook. And this one friend, let's call her Sally, who usually has very similar views to mine, saying similar politics moral views, kept posting for three days straight stuff about how important it is for couples to have shared finances. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with it, you do you, but it was three days of long posts about how all truly happy marriages have shared finances, no matter what the earnings are. Now my husband and I have been together for 13 years now, and one thing we decided on really early was to always keep our finances separate. We have been married for 5 years and we still have separate accounts and we split all bills 50-50 and have all no funds that we each put money into for savings. It has worked out really well for us because we don't really fight about money ever. He buys what he wants, I buy what I want, we don't need to ask for permission and we don't argue over purchases. There has been a few times over the years where one of us had difficulties and the other helps out and we don't worry about paybacks or anything. It's not like we track everything down to the penny, we just really don't bother with discussion on it. We still talk to each other whenever we are going to make a big purchase like a car or something, but that's about it. I responded to Sally's post saying it's possible for a married couple to have separate finances and still be very happy, saying my husband and I were a perfect example for this. She doubled down and said the way we work is not normal and we might as well be roommates. After that it was kind a lot of back and forth with me asking why having separate finances negates 13 years of being a happy couple and here arguing that marriage turns everything that's yours and mine to a wee automatically. It ended up getting a lot of attention from our mutual friends and old co-workers and everyone seems kinda split down the middle. Almost all of men agree with me and almost all of women agree with her, which in itself is annoying as well. I ended up asking her straight out if she thought my husband and I were unhappy and she said well no but and then I pointed out that she just ended her own argument and she got mad and said I tricked her and then she blocked me. I cannot see the post anymore but apparently people are still arguing on whether or not I am the a-hole for contradicting her and others who are just saying you do you, leave it be. Should I have just left it alone or was I right to voice my opinion? I did it to say, by separate I mean my check goes to my account and his to his own account. He does not have access to my salary and I do not have access to his. We pay all bills 50-50 for the household and our son. People replied in the comments with, I always find it fascinating when people broadcast their stupid opinions to the world on social media but then get defensive when someone challenges their take. Like what do people expect? You're not the a-hole. You're not the a-hole. It is additionally important for those kinds of false statements to be countered because for some women it is dangerous to have all of their finances in control of another if it turns out to be an abusive relationship later on. Those kinds of false perceptions of but every healthy relationship does it, which isn't the case, can place an extra layer of guilt on women who are trying to protect themselves just in case and they should not be guilted into having to share finances. You're not the a-hole. Me and my partner have a very similar setup to you. We're very happy and it honestly works well. I think every couple is different, it's not a one way is right kind of thing. I remember my brother always used to say I didn't have a real relationship because we didn't have all our money in a joint account. But it backfired on him pretty quickly when he and his partner broke up and she took all the money. So if anything I have seen the opposite of couples that actually pull everything. Now for my personal opinion, the poster is not the a-hole here. Every marriage is different and I don't get why some people don't understand the fact that not everyone is exactly like them. Next story, am I the a-hole for refusing to discuss wedding details with my sister-in-law? Last fall, my husband and I decided to get married after cancelling our large wedding due to COVID concerns. We had a wedding with 12 people total, fully masked and entirely outdoors. 
At the same time, my now sister-in-law had to postpone her wedding and very much disapproved of our decision. Here and her fiancé made a lot of snide remarks but never confronted us and ultimately did attend. My husband's parents did not attend and we told them we understood and even sent them decorations for their house for when they watch it online. Fast forward to now, my sister-in-law is having her full wedding which has over 100 guests at the end of this month. My husband's parents disagree with this decision but have decided to attend. Everyone's rationale is this wedding is okay because almost everyone will be partially vaccinated. My husband and I find this attitude hypocritical. Cases are almost double what they were when we got married and we had an order of magnitude less people. I'm honestly still very upset about how my sister-in-law acted and cannot stand talking about her wedding. So I just don't. My husband can hide his anger but I cannot. To avoid spoiling things for everyone, I just don't participate in the discussion and wait for the topic to change. Today in an Esther FaceTime, it became very obvious that I was ignoring her and things got really awkward. Am I the a-hole for being upset and handling this the way I am? I know this isn't the most mature way to deal, but I truly do not believe I can pretend that I approve of her choice and that I'm over how she behaved leading up to my own wedding. People replied in the comments with, you're not the a-hole. I do the same thing when facetiming with my in-laws who have never had much respect for COVID guidelines. If you cannot say something nice, do not say anything at all. If she has a problem with that, it's a her problem. If you can manage a few polite, maybe even prescripted, non-committal responses, it might help keep the peace. Sounds like a classic example of the squeaky wheel gets the grease. It's not fair, but they're probably just justifying their attendance because she's drama. I would take comfort in knowing your wedding got less attention because you're not a jerk, not because it should have been that way. You're not the a-hole. I would say you did the right thing by refusing to talk about a topic that would likely result in drama because she won't like your opinion. And you know what? It's okay to be a little bitter that she's having a big wedding when you didn't. Now for my personal opinion, who? There is no pleasing entitled dramatic people. How is the poster an a-hole for saving her words to herself? Absolutely not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for calling the police about a loud concert going on a few blocks away? We live in a residential area in North Las Vegas. Yesterday afternoon through the night, there was what sounded like a very loud concert going on. It continued for hours from around 4 p.m. to around midnight, Easter morning. My wife is on the autism spectrum and the loud booming bass was spitting her head open. She was curled up on bed with her head between two pillows. I know people here have said to go over to the neighbors to ask them to turn it down, off, and I have in the past, when they are on our street. This was at least a street or more over, and I wasn't about to go running around late at night looking for this darn concert during a pandemic. I did call the police on them when it was around 10 p.m. and again at 11 p.m., when the music was still going strong. It did finally quiet down about 20 minutes after the second call, but started back up. A punch a quieter thankfully, enough so we could go to sleep. Not sure how long it kept after this, since we were sleeping. Our daughter said I would be the a-hole since if the people playing the music were illegals, they could get deported. For reference, we live in a mostly Hispanic area and are one of the only white families around, and the music and announcer slash DJ was in Spanish. My reply to her was, if they are illegal, maybe they shouldn't be disturbing the peace for 6 plus hours the day before Easter. I did ask the dispatcher when I called the non-emergency line if it was illegal to be playing music that loud that late. He told me that if we could hear it through closed doors and windows, then it most definitely a problem that would have to be checked out, no matter the time of the day. People replied in the comments with, you're not the a-hole. 
If the people playing music are here illegally, then they should probably stay on the down low instead of throwing a wild concert. If they get deported, that's their fault. You're not the a-hole. You are not obligated to shield anyone from the consequences of their actions. The argument that you shouldn't call in a noise complaint because it could lead to harsher consequences than you expect could be applied to pretty much anyone. That doesn't change the fact that after 6 or 7 hours of being uncomfortable in your own home because of someone else being disrespectful, it's reasonable to want to put a stop to it. As a side note, most undocumented immigrants are not going to be engaging in behavior that draws attention, bases off their neighbors, and increases their likelihood of a call to the police. Speaking from my own experience growing up in an area with a high concentration of post-documented and undocumented immigrants from Mexico, those who are undocumented didn't go through the trouble to get here just passed away. The personal stakes for them are very high, and 90% of them they're going to go to great lenses not to draw unwanted attention. Now for my personal opinion, the poster is not the a-hole, it's actually kinda sweet they thought of this and wrote this post but the fault remains on the noisemaker. This concludes all the stories we have for this video, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to share your opinions in the comment section down below. Until next time.